Hello guys, Rollvap1 here, coming at you with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and in today's Yu-Gi-Oh! video, as you can see, I'm going to be showing you my updated Adamancipator deck profile, along with Prank Kids. Yes, I have incorporated Prank Kids into that insane list that I showed you guys on Instagram, where I have the end board with Naturia Beast, IP, Needle Fiber, and Crystal Wing, and I incorporated Prank Kids into that to make the deck even better, to make it even stronger, and just have, well, a better chance of winning. So, guys, I have evolved this deck, I have been testing this deck, I have been trying to make it even better, and with the new list that I made, and the additions of the Prank Kids into the deck, I think the deck is absolutely insane, just being able to end on some really crazy boards, like Nat Beast, Crystal Happy Fibrax, uh, Battle Butler, and also Crystal Wing, and just do so much because of it. And you'll see those combos coming up in a later video this week where I'll show you a hand testing and combo video. But right now, I'm going to show you guys the deck profile and show you basically what the deck is and how the deck works. So without further ado, let's get into the deck profile so you can see my updated Adam Antipater deck profile with Prank Kids. So let's go into it. So starting off, we are playing the Free Researcher. Obviously, you play three of her. She's a free special summoner for control of rock, and she has the same effect as every other Adamantipater tuner, where if you use its effect, you can excavate the top five cards of your deck, and if there's a rock monster that is not a tuner among them and is level four or lower, you can special summon it. So free special summon helps you get to your prank kids roxies to go into the prank kids combo and it's just an insane card being a free special summon we also play free seeker which has the same effect as researcher to activate the top five but only special summons itself if you control an adamantipir monster and then we also have free analyzer which has the same effect as the other two but special summons itself if your opponent controls a monster so Pretty much, these are all the same card, except that this is the only different one where it's not a free special summon if you have something, it's a free special summon if your opponents have something, and also it's a level 4. But you need to be playing three of each of them because they're your consistency cards in the deck. They're the cards that are going to get you further into your combos and further into your plays, which is getting you to more rock monsters to go into synchro plays, or getting you to the prank kids for Roxies to allow you to go into your prank kids combo. So... All three of these are very important and you have to run three of each. You want to open at least one of them in every opening hand. Going into Miscellaneous Rocks though, we are playing two Doki Doki. Card is just really insane. Discard a rock monster that's level four or level two, such as itself or something like a Cocky Mirror Guardian to summon out a Seeker or a Researcher or an Analyzer. Really insane. And it's a level two to allow you to go into a level four synchro plays or level six synchro plays, which is just really, really good. Uh, three, Cocky Mirror Guardian, because, well, it's Guardian. Guardian literally says, oh, um, I negate monster effects, so I negate every hand trap in the game, pretty much, other than Imperm. So, just a really strong card, and this is one of the reasons why this deck is so good, because this card says, basically, oh, I'm an advanced player, player. I don't care if you have Ash Blossom, I don't care if you have Effect Veiler, I don't care if you have Ghost Spell, I don't care if you have, like, a Phantasme for all I care, because, you know what? This card says, oh, I negate any monster effect. So pretty much this card is just really insane. Having the ability to just say, no, you can't have that effect. So Cookie Mirror Guardian, just a really, really strong card and really good card for that matter as well. Just being a free negate. Um, we also play one Cookie Mirror Supplier with it because when a face up earth monster or rock monster is sent to graveyard, you can special summon it from the hand, and also when it's special summoned, you get to go ahead and add a Cookie Mirror card from your deck to your hand. So special summon it. Add Cocky Mirror Guardian, discard fodder for like Doki Doki or something, or just a free summon for later on in the turn. Like, really, really good card, and just, it's a one-off. I wouldn't play it more than one. Sure, it's a free summon from hand if you do send a Rock Monster to the graveyard, but honestly, I feel like it's just a one-off because it's a free summon, yes, but you need to have to send something to the graveyard to actually utilize that effect. And I would, because I'm playing the Prank Kids engine along with other Rock Monsters, it does take up space, and I felt like we needed more space for other cards. Um, we also though playing one Tackle Crusader, because when this card is sent to Graveyard, it can either return us Floodgate that our opponent controls in the Spell and Trap cards into hand, or set their window. So if you're up against a Shadow player, and you have something like Foolish Bear on hand, then you can just go ahead and send this to Graveyard, and just go ahead and set their window. Or if they have a Floodgate, such as maybe there can only be one, return that there can only be one to hand, and now you can play the game. So Tackle Crusader is just a really, really strong one of, and it's a really good card nonetheless. We also play one Revival Golem, because when this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard, you get to go ahead and special summon it. So we're playing like Foolish Burial and Revi and um, Miracle Rupture as well, just so we can go ahead and send uh, Rock Monsters to graveyard to get free summons such as this. So it's just like a free Rock Monster that we can go into and go into more plays from there. So Revival Golem, just a really, really strong card. 
We're also playing one at Emancipator Crystal Dragite because when this card is special summoned, it allows us to draw a card. So we go ahead and reveal it with um, the Researcher, the Seeker, the Analyzer, any of those. And we special summon it, draw a card, pretty good. And if there's no other rock monsters in there, it's just free resource as well. And can also allow us to recycle our Dragite from the extra deck if it's ever in the graveyard. So just pretty decent there too. Uh, and then the last miscellaneous rock we're playing is one Century Soldier of Stone because this is how we go ahead and make Nap Beast where we send this to the graveyard. If we only control rock monsters, this is a free special summon from the grave so we special summon it and then we can go ahead and use secret or analyzer to go ahead and make a naturia beast preventing all spell cards on our opponent's turn so just a really really good card that can deal with a lot of problems that our opponent may have so one century so century soldier of stone um those are all the miscellaneous rocks though going into the prank kids area though we're playing Three Prank Kids Roxies. You have to play three of the Roxies because it's the one that you're going to be summoning off your Animancipator monsters to allow you to go into your Prank Kids combos. So you need to be playing three of each of these. And also, this card is actually pretty decent as well because when you do use it for its uh, Prank Kids play, you go ahead and banish a random card in your hand, like a dead card that you can't really use, such as maybe like a dead rock monster that you can't use, and then just draw a card and that card can potentially be a hand trap or an extending card or anything along those lines. So pretty good there. And we also play one Lampsies, one Dropsies, and one Fancies just so we can go ahead and make the Battle Butler with the prank kids pandemonium you need to be playing one of each just for the combo and those are pretty much all the rock all the uh, actual monsters we're playing the last three monsters we're playing in the deck is free ash blossom as just a really good hand trap um ash is just the best hand trap in the game so in all honesty you shouldn't not be playing a deck without this because unless you're playing like a big trap deck or something along those lines you're going to really need ash blossom because ash blossom is just going to prevent your opponent from doing their combos most of the time and it allows you to stop them at certain intervals such as against dinos if you hit their miscellaneous source with the ash they normally just pass turn but that's all the main deck like the main deck monsters are honestly very tight um i tried to make as much room for it, everything as possible and i feel like i found the perfect ratio for everything like playing all the miscellaneous rock monsters we're playing about 13 rock monsters that we can actually summon off the adamant spears as well so nine times out of ten you're gonna have a rock in those adamant spears excavations too but going into spell cards though we do play three adamant spears signs along with the monster evolve um, reason behind this is because, well, we want as much potential late game plays as possible while also having turn one plays as well. Because what this all does is Monster Reborn is just a free summon, obviously. It's from either player's graveyard. So if we do get hand trap, if we do get Nibiru, we have the Monster Reborn to revive anything. But the signs is actually the best, better one than Monster Reborn because if we summon back a Adamantopia monster with this effect, we get to go ahead and stack our deck. So if we summon back like a researcher, for instance, we can just go ahead and we with signs, then we can just go ahead and put any rock monster on top of our deck. Deck. so we could go ahead and put the supplier on top so we can special summon and get a guardian from our deck tackle crusader to have a free send we could go ahead and put the dragite for a free draw the sentry of stone to just go ahead and guarantee a naturia beast um the roxies to go into the prank kids play uh science is just a guaranteed monster reborn that also stacks our deck with adam Aspear monsters so you want to be playing three and one as well just so we can have as much revivability and much guarantee for a monster as possible and to go along with the uh adam Aspear science and the monster reborn we're also playing three miracle rupture um, and a foolish burial because if we open literally any combination of uh, Adamantipate Science, Monster Reborn, or Rupture, or Foolish Burial together. If we literally open any combination of any of these eight cards, then that's a guaranteed turn one Adamantipate Monster plus stack, or a guaranteed at what, turn one like Dragite. Like for instance, if we open Miracle Rupture and we open uh, Science, then we can just go ahead and stack. We can go ahead and send to Graveyard Dragite, use the Science to revive the Dragite, stack our deck with a card, and then Dragite draws us the card we stack. So that's just a plus two right there which just gives us a guaranteed Adam Antipater play. But also, it guarantees that we can also get cards like our Tackle Crusader to Graveyard to deal with Floodgate monsters, such as Winda or Floodgates in general, such as Economy V1, or Revival Golem to the Graveyard to go ahead and get a free special summon, or even our Century of Stone to go ahead and get a free special summon of it if we can control rocks. Like, or even just put the Prank Kids Roxies in the Graveyard to go ahead and revive with the Science to go into a whole Prank Kids play. Like, honestly, this these eight cards i would say are mandatory staples in adam Antipater right now just for the fact that they're guaranteed summons if you get them they're guaranteed plays if you have them and it just lets you extend your combos even further so you have to be playing them in the deck like literally you're playing four foolish burials and four monster reborns in a deck like that's insane to have four monster reborns and four foolish burials like absolutely insane and honestly if we ever get block dragon back I wouldn't even change this because block dragon would just make the deck even more consistent and even more better and these nine to eight cards would stay in because it's just going to make the deck even better overall um but you have to play those those eight cards specifically you can't literally take them out don't ever take them out 
Um, but then the last the last cards we're playing is three Forbidden Droplets. Um, obviously, Forbidden Droplets just go ahead and negate anything our opponent has, such as like, I don't know, uh, Boral Savage, go ahead and negate their Winder, go ahead and negate anything, have Disruption for your opponent's turn. Forbidden Droplets is just a really, really strong card that I think is just great in any deck right now. And then the last card we're playing is one Prank Kids Pun Demonium, which is the fusion spell which will allow us to go ahead and make Battle Butler. So yeah, that is the entire main deck. Honestly, you're probably thinking there's not enough hand traps, there's not enough disruption, but literally guys, this deck can play through so many disruptions. Like I've played through four disruptions at one point with this deck alone, and that is absolutely insane to think how you can actually do that. So yeah, um, I'm very happy with this list and I'm really hoping you guys like the list as well, just from the main deck in general. But for the extra deck, for the extra deck, um, we are obviously playing, starting off with the one prank kids meow meow meow. Um, you have to play the one of it just so you can go ahead and link the uh, Roxy's away to go into the prank kids combo. So you play the one for that. Uh, you also use it with Battle Butler, so you can have a double Raigeki for their turn, where you banish it from the graveyard and just guarantee that your plays. Um, one uh, prank kids doodle doodle do as well, because the doodle do is literally just you summon it, you search the pandemonium, and then you have then you tribute it to get the two prank kids monsters from your graveyard to your hands. Because you're normally going to go uh, Roxy's into Fancy's, Fancy's sends a Lampsies or a Dropsies, and then you special summon the Lampsies or Dropsies from deck, and then you doodle do to return the Fancy's and whatever one you sent with the fanzies to the graveyard to your hand. So you have the pandemonium and everything else ready for the battle butler. So you want to be playing that for those reasons. Um, we're also playing one Halky Firebrax. This is here, one, to get an additional tuner from deck so we can go into a crystal wing, but two, because we're playing a specific tuner monster that we actually summon with this to guarantee that we can go into a satellite warrior. So we want to be playing the one Halky Firebrax, one Brawl Sword for potential OTKs. It can come up, it's just there for that specific reason, but you can change it if you really want. I just feel like it's really good for the fact that you can just go ahead for an OTK at times when you don't have options for the OTK. Uh, one Abyss Dweller. Um, this has multiple purposes actually, because if we have a Tackle Crusader on board and we make the Dweller, that makes Tackle Crusader a double utility purpose. Where one, it's a material to go ahead and detach with Dweller to go ahead and negate opponent's entire graveyard. And two, we can also go ahead and just return a card on our opponent's board or set a card our opponent controls. So it has double utility there where we go ahead and set our opponent's cards and also negate the whole graveyard with Abyss Dweller, which is why I really like. Plus, it's just a good card. Uh, one Gallic Granite, it searches Researcher. Uh, that's pretty much the whole purpose of the card. It searches Researcher, it searches Analyzer, it searches Seeker. I don't know how else to explain this card. You play it just for that. Um, one Formula Synchron. This is the card that you're going to be summoning off your Happy Fibrax. One, because it gives you a draw, and two, because it's a level two Synchro that is a free Synchro summon during opponent's turn to make Satellite Warrior. The card is really good, and you definitely play it in this deck. Uh, one Herald of Arclight, it's just a negate. It doesn't always come up. It's a cop that you can honestly take out as well. But I just like it for the fact where you have those boards where you have like Doki Doki and you also have like a Researcher or, or a Seeker Spare. So you just go ahead and make this and have one on the gate there. One Naturia Beast, it comes up when it comes up. And when you make it, nine times out of ten, you're going to win the game because spells are very important in this game. One Leonite, Excavate 5, go ahead and, well yeah, Excavate 5, if you've got an Ashen Grave, Reborn during your opponent's turn, um, add a Adamant's Payer card from your top 5 cards to your hand, like, it's just a free Excavate to add from deck to hand. Risen Raptite, this card literally just says I special summon another one from my deck, ignoring levels, or if it's a tuner, so ex combo extender right there. Dragite, return your entire board to your hand, or, you know, be an Omni, be a Spell or Trap Negate, it's just really strong there. Crystal Wing, Monster Negate, you're 9 times out of 10 going to end on this card on the end of the turn 1. So this is just a mandatory in the deck, I'm not going to go into it again. Uh, one Satellite Warrior, because this card is actually really, really insane in the deck. Um, basically what Satellite Warrior does is, if it's Synchro Summoned, you can go ahead and target cards your opponent controls up to the number of Synchros in your graveyard. Normally on turn 1 with the Formula Synchron, you will have at least 3, which will be a Raptite. The crystal wing that you're going to use to make it and the formula synchron that you're going to use to make it and you're going to destroy up to three cards your opponent controls so not only is it destroying though it also gains 1000 attack points for every card destroyed so if you summon this top three cards this is now a 5-5 beat stick allowing you to OTK your opponent and if they do kill this as well because if it does die, it, it does have an error effect. You get to go ahead and special summon uh, free, uh, up to three, level eight or lower, Synchro Warrior, Synchros, uh, Synchro Warriors, Synchron Monsters, or Stardust mon Synchro Monsters from your graveyard. So pretty much you get to go ahead and revive the Formula Synchron that you used to make it as well. So if it does die, you have a tuner for next turn to go into other Synchro plays. So it's just really decent there as well. Being just a really big monster, being just a pop up to three cards on your opponent's board, and just being a generally really nice card. 
And lastly, but not leastly, obviously, we're playing one Prank Kids Battle Butler, because Battle Butler is literally just a Rageki on legs that we use twice during our opponent's turn to go ahead and prevent them from playing the game. But yeah, um, that is the entire deck profile, guys. Honestly, this deck is really, really fun. I really, really do like Adamant's Pair. It's a deck that I really have enjoyed playing ever since it came out. Like, there's been times where I've just, like, put it to the side and not played it and felt like, oh, I don't really want to play this deck right now. It's just does the same thing. But... Honestly, there's so many ways to innovate this deck and so many ways to change it. Like, you could honestly just pr cut the Prank Kids engine, which I think is kind of wrong right now because of the amount of advantage it actually gives you. But you could kind of put more rocks in there, put like more back row, more hand traps in there to make a more hand trap centric build. Or you could go ahead and make more, just keep the Prank Kids build for a more combo build. Or cut the hand traps and also put in like Dark Room and more so you're going for more of a going first build or a going second build to go ahead and clear your opponent's board. Like, honestly, and the Vance of Hair are a lot a lot of fun and with the prank kids it makes the deck even better so i hope you enjoyed it though but guys literally this is my deck i really do hope you enjoyed the profile hope you enjoyed the list i hope you're going to enjoy the combos slash hand testings we're going to be doing in a couple of days on the channel and guys i really have nothing else to say about this because i really love adam Antipir. i'm happy to have been able to showcase this today on the channel and i really hope you enjoyed it so Everything I've said is done. Please don't forget to check out the Discord, Instagram, everything along those lines. If you want to get in touch with me, see any of my posts. I post on Instagram quite frequently right now, um, like once or twice a week. I'm not too big on it. It's just whenever I get something really cool or I pull something or I'm doing something like maybe hand testing combos. Like you can see an end board. You can see the end board for the original build of this that I was going to upload, but then realized Prank Kids was so much better on there. And yeah, please don't forget to check out those sites. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Robot One, signing out. Later all.